Oh, sorry, darling. I didn't mean to wake you. It's OK. I was awake anyway. Anything wrong? No. Well, now you're up. Why don't you come and have breakfast with me? Make a change, wouldn't it? Are you guessing at me? No. I just thought it'd be rather a nice Look, idea if you... I would just like to be go. on my own. Please. All right, I'll, uh, I'll go down. Mrs. Hadley isn't very well. She won't be coming down this morning. Well, shall I take a train or something? No, I wouldn't if I were you. I should leave her be. She'll ring if she wants anything. Very good, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Melford Park, good morning. Is Leo Ingram here? Oh, would you hold the line, sir? I'll see if Mr. Hadley's up. Excuse me, sir. A Mr. Leo Ingram for you. Leo? Hello, Leo, where the hell have you been all these years? Holland, Germany, Denmark, wherever a computer could make an honest living. King of the common market, that's me. And Greta? Oh, she's in Amsterdam, clearing up. We had a company flat there. She's fine, fine, we're both fine. Well, what the hell are you doing here? Well, you know what they say, James, once a Yorkshireman. I thought I'd set up here again and see what's what. Actually, that's why I'm phoning you. Mm -hmm. I know that tone in your voice, Leo, after about four years, even. What are you up to? James, it's Saturday. Whatever the landed gentry get up to, you can't be up to it on a Saturday. Come on over. I've got something to show you. Yes, and the last time you said that, we ended up in Dublin and I broke a collarbone. <laughs> James, please. Old time's sake. I'll tell you what, bring a gun. We might get some shooting. Ah, well, that's different. Uh, I shall have to check with Jenny. Jenny? Hmm. My wife. Well, say something. Good God. What do you mean, good God? What sort of a response is that? No, no, I mean, it's marvellous. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled, of course. It's just that, well, I'm rather startled, that's all. I'd written you off. Yes, I think most people have. Well, I'll bring her with you. I'd like to meet the lady who's managed to land James Hadley. She must be quite a girl. Yes, she is. Well, most of the time she is, but unfortunately not today. She's a bit off colour. Huh. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll, um, I'll check with her, and if I don't ring you back, I'll be with you about 11, all right? Yes, yeah, see you, James. Right, bye. Sutton, breakfast is ready. Yes, would you get my gun out, please, and put a couple of boxes of cartridges in the car? Certainly, sir. Ah, there you are. Feeling better? Yeah. Can I get you anything? You, uh, you wouldn't like to go out, would you, darling? An old friend of mine, Leo Ingram, he's just phoned. He wants us to spend the day with him. He lives a couple of hours' drive north of here. Uh, no thanks, but you go, sir. Yes, all right. I, uh, I will if you don't mind. I'll be back this afternoon. Fine. James! Hmm? Um, nothing. Sally, what is it? Is this something I've done? I've said? I haven't forgotten your birthday, have oh, I? Oh, for heaven's sake, stop being so paranoid. I just want to be on my own. No, she's not, I'm afraid, Sutton. I'll be back sometime this afternoon. What about breakfast, sir? Oh, eat it yourself. Hello. Hello, Lois. How are you? It's OK, Sutton, I got it. What? Um, well, yes, I suppose so. Oh, yes, of course. It's just that I've got a few problems of my own. What? It's a bit early in the day, isn't it? Special occasion. Old times, James. Old times, Leo. Well, what's it all about? Oh, I just couldn't stand the sight of another computer. I got bored and it showed. 
The golden handshake was forthcoming, so here I am. You retired? No, I couldn't retire, James. I dropped dead. Mm. I have to have something to do. Something to do with people. And I know exactly what it is. That's why the first person I phoned when I got back was you. James, have you any idea what Dutch and German firms are handing out as perks? No, you tell me. <laughs> well, they get some of their executive bright boys and some of their clients and they send them over here to Britain for a week in a private country house with everything laid on. Collected at the airport by a couple of Rollses, brought to the house, top quality chef, two servants per guest, food, drink, shooting, riding, hunting, all in, 300 quid a week per head. You can clear 50,000 pounds a season. I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> oh, sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? But I've costed it, and I have found the house. And, of course, that's why I'm here. Uh, just reserve judgment until you've seen it. Come on, we'll get the guns in the car. The keys are at the lawyer's. How'd you meet her? Hmm? How did you meet her? Ah, I, uh, I was looking for a butler and I found you. <laughs> How long have you been married? Six months exactly, next Tuesday. Any family on the way? Come on, give us a chance. Well, don't leave it too long, James. You're wearing well, but uh, you're not getting any younger either. Well, I don't think I'm past it yet. <laughs> Good afternoon, Miss Carroll. Hello. Um, Sutton. Ah, yes, we have met before. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Lewis. Why don't you slide down? <laughs> <laughs> hello, Jen. Well, come on, come oh, in. Thanks. Oh, I've got some things in the... Ah, the butler. Shut up, he's not the butler. <laughs> Footman. Manservant. Cook. James's nanny. Well, did you have a good drive? Oh, the van's a bit noisy, but you get used to it. <laughs> Shall I, uh... Oh, please, of course, I'm sorry. Thanks. So, you've run away? No, I've left. A couple of miles over there. We couldn't have got down the drive anyway. Some trees are down. It's a bit overgrown. I hope your clients bring a compass. They'll never find the place. <laughs> Kids of Europe are going to come and play, is it? Yep. You sure there's any game here? If there isn't, I'll import it. <laughs> He's been dumping me. You know, going all over the place without me. Comes in, I say, had a nice time. He says, all right. I say, where? He says, the pictures. I say, who with? He says, no one. Or, or the pub. And I say, well, who was there? And he says, oh, just people. We still sleep in the same bed, but that's all it is. Just ignores me. So I left him. Well, wouldn't you? Me? Yes, leave James if he started playing around. Oh, uh, well, you're not married to Tony. Oh, good as. No, no, it's not the same thing. Oh, my God, you've gone feudal. Look, I've lived with that man for four years. I've washed for him, cooked for him, even cut his toenails. If it comes to that, I'm a damn sight more married than you are. Oh, I wonder when he'll notice I've gone. Haven't you told him? No. If he gets worried, he can phone around. That's a bit drastic, isn't it? I felt drastic. Well, just because you've been fighting. We haven't been fighting. Fighting's different. Fighting's all right. Have you been fighting? Mm, skirmishing. <laughs> I mean, a fight's a fight. It's real. It's alive. It's half the love-hate thing. I remember the first fight Tony and I ever had. We were in a pub in Cornwall, summer 69, and we were new and glowing. Well, I was. It was a lovely evening, but Tony spent most of it chatting up a blonde who was wearing a magnificent suntan and not much else. So I walked off. Into the sunset. Into the sea. 
I was going to walk slowly and with dignity until the waters closed above me and my pale, freckled body would drift in on the morning tide and come to rest at Tony's feet. So what happened? Seaweed. <laughs> Can't stand the stuff. So I marched back into the pub, said, that's mine, and dragged him off. Oh, it was a lovely evening. Ah, oh, there'd be others. Promise. <laughs> ah, Sutton. <clears throat> Good shot. Jagged hair. Something will be pleased. It's gone berserk with the cheese board. <laughs> hey, where's James? He's left me. What? For the day. There we are. Historic house, park, stables, trout stream, woods, lake. Overgrown? Yes, well, nobody's been near it for 30 years. I found it on an ordnance survey. Hardly anybody knew about it. Mm. Oh, come on. Yeah, well, it needs doing up. Well, that's an understatement, isn't oh, it? Not to worry, the fabric's there. The fabric's there. There we are. Dining room. Well, you've got a good fireplace. Oh, yes, it's a quality house, James, or it has been. Used to belong to a, a Lord Everett, whose great-great-grandfather once parleyed with Bonnie Prince Charlie on the road south. Or north. It's a historic house. How much do you intend to spend? Wait till you see the drawing. How much, Leo? With 50,000 a year clear profit, that question hardly seems relevant. Well, the money has to be found. Found? Well, it'll pour in. Listen, am I right about this house? Don't worry about the house. Do you know how much it's going to cost you to resurface that drive out oh, there? James, don't be dreary. We'll lay out the grounds. You'll have to lay out the house, too, won't you? Have you seen the roof? It's rotten. The lead's off. Oh, no, no, no. You can't have a new house. It's got to be old. Oh, traditions, history. It's just not the same saying this was the place on which. Well, the stonework sound. How much? Say seventy-five thousand. Yeah, we might get a development grant. Oh, listen, James, we'll get our money back inside two years, and after that, a fair profit. It's not just the profit, is it, Leo? No. No, it's more important than that for me and for Greta. This is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Well, say something, James. Well, I, I can see you in it, Leo, but I, I just can't see me, I'm afraid. Why not? Because I'm not in a position to speculate anymore, that's why. Are the Hadley fortunes found, right? <laughs> I'm a married man. I only have responsibilities. Not children, you mean? Mm. Listen, by the time he comes of age, your son and heir will thank you for this place. Mm. How did you say you intended to raise the money? From myself. That's a big bet, isn't it? And from my friends. Among which I have the honour to be numbered. Isn't it? You and I, James, as senior partners, say 10,000 each. Oh, the rest will come rolling in in two or three thousands. We've got a lot of friends. 
Come and see the view. Hey, is that safe? Well, it was last time. Almost human again. Lewis. Tony should be home by now. Wonder when he'll realise. When he wants the van, I suppose. No. Damn it, let him stew. <sighs> you uh, bought anything since the wedding? Could we go up? <laughs> yeah, of course. I think we could both use this. Mm. Wow! <laughs> well, as master bedrooms go, this is certainly the best. <laughs> now, if we had a bed like that, I... Where do you keep your gear? Here? Mm, there isn't anything very exciting. Oh, this is beautiful! must be a riot at the Hunt Ball. Oh, no. It's you, it's not me. Lois, mm -hmm. I think I'm pregnant. In fact, I'm almost sure I am. Oh, that's marvellous. James must be thrilled. I haven't told him. Why not? Doesn't he want children? Oh, yes, I think so. Uh, yes, yes, I'm sure he does. It's one of the reasons he married me. <laughs> that's great, Jen, great. Three cheers for a good girl, and here's to the Hadley's. Lois, I don't want it. For the house and grounds alone, you're going to need a hundred thousand. Never. That's assuming the drains are all right. That's assuming there are drains. You haven't seen the barn yet. Oh, God. It's beginning to rain. Now, that's either a banqueting hall for conventions or a swimming pool. Now, if we had conventions, we could use it in the winter. Leo, it's a big jump in the dark. You're James, I'm not asking much. Well, 10,000. What's 10,000? And all my friends who'd come. Oh, no. Right now, I only want one thing from you. Go with me as far as setting up a No. Party. There's no obligation it, to continue. It wouldn't end there, would it? There's something else, isn't there? You're still a young man, James. You're at the beginning of things. I'm older than you are. I could be at the end. Greta? Oh, it's not the usual thing. There's nobody else. It's just that, well, since the kids grew up and went away, it left her with time to take a good long look at me. Always charging around Europe, exhibitions, conferences, big sales deals. Always with a, a glass in my hand. Lots of chat for the boys. And nothing to say to her. When I left the company, she took a job. Oh, we haven't separated, but we're not... We're not together. That's why I want this, James. For Greta and I to share. Together. Well, if, if you'd ask me at almost any other time, Leo... I... I see. Man to man, James. Are you pregnant? Man to man, Leo. I just don't know. Jen, you're not thinking no, of... No, God, no, I couldn't do that to James. It's... I just need more time. Great place to have kids in. Attics for the nannies. Not any attics. Not the kind you mean, anyway. Well, outhouses in the buttery, the creamery, cow sheds, all those servants' quarters. Ponies in the park? What happened to James's treehouse? Now, James must have had a treehouse, like Christopher Robin, or was it Peter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, love. I came to cry on you. Oh, that's a story in my life. Oh, cheer up, Jen. This is not me, is it? What, having a baby? No, it's 
it's not, it's like living in a bloody film set. It's not a home. It's not my home, anyway. This room matches me. And, and the clothes in the wardrobe, and things on the dressing table, and, and the sheets smell of me, and that's it. I, I, I need another year at least. I, I don't even know him yet. You'll make a lovely dad. <laughs> no. Spoil you to blazes, and all the tenants will come with their offerings to the new squire of Melford. Well, I'm not the lady of Melford, am I? I mean, look at all the pictures on the walls of Grandpa Hadley and Granny Hadley and Admiral Hadley and General Hadley and black bloody sheep of the family. Hadley. That's marriage. <laughs> you don't have to live with Tony's ancestral gods. As you reminded me, I'm not married to Tony. Oh, Lois, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so terribly sorry. Oh. Be all right in the end. <laughs> Don't know about that. Have you ever been pregnant? Wish I had. I would have nailed him. I don't mean that. I want his baby. It's what it's all about. It's got to be what it's all about. But you and Tony, you've known each other for four years. Even if you have a fight, you've got some kind of security. Look who's talking. Security. You've got money. You're not going to have to wash nappies. You're not going to have to walk the floor all night. You're going to stay you because you'll have slaves. I'm the one who'll be a broken old cow with Tony screaming at me for lack of sleep. I've seen it over and over. You don't know how lucky you are. You've got it all going for you. A wonderful husband, a lovely home, and all you can do is stand there and moan to me about security. Look, I'll tell you this for nothing. If you're not secure now, you'll never be. I'm a spoilt bitch. Yes. But I understand. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be its godmother. <laughs> <laughs> and think of all those super <laughs> tiny <laughs> Oh, don't worry, Jen, you'll make a lovely mum. <laughs> oh, God, what we need to drink. Now, where's the thing you blow down and it whistles in the kitchen? <laughs> where's James? Where's Tony? It's beginning to lift. Oh, come on, Leo, we must go. I said I'd be home after lunch. You haven't had lunch. Well, whose fault's that? Well, James, what's your answer? I can't commit myself, Leo. There must be other people you could interest. Not like you, James, and you know it. I really thought I was onto a good thing. You may very well be. Look, you must trust your own judgment. Just don't count on me, that's all. I know why I like this house. It's like me, crumbling, letting in the rain. Now you're getting maudlin. You know, we should have had lunch. I'm hungry. Son? Yes, madam? Did Mr. Haddle leave a number? No, madam. Oh. You don't happen to know Mr. Leo Ingram's address, do you? I'm afraid not, madam, no. Yeah. Is there anything else I can do for you, Mrs. Hadley? No, thank you, sir. Are you worried? No. I see. Oh, do you want to phone Tony? Nope. I see. Mm. Nice drink, champagne. Mm. I don't know why people reserve for celebrating. It's for cheering up. James doesn't reserve it for celebrating. He reserves it for picnics. <laughs> you don't have to put them down for eating. I'm sure it's when they're born. Would you put your son down for eating? <laughs> no fear, it's your privileged ducky. Well, we're we going to put the nursery. I mean, the cow shed's a long way away. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Presume you want to see your child. Oh, yes, I presume so. Oh. 
What's all this corridors? Mm. Rooms and rooms and rooms. Didn't James have a nursery? Oh, oh yes. Yes, James had a day nursery and a night nursery, a schoolroom and a playroom. Mm -hmm. You're joking. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Come and see. Come on. Come on. Take it with us. Good idea. Huh. Where does Sutton live? Sutton has a flat above the kitchen. Well, then you put the baby in there and you put Sutton in the cow shed. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> We should have left an hour ago. We'll be through it in five minutes. We'll be damn lucky if we're through it by nightfall. <laughs> Don't forget your gun. Oh, you? yeah. Might swell up and then I won't get the boot back on again. Just get me up and let's get going. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Ah! Oh, God! Now just stay still. <sighs> oh, make a, make a note, James. New flooring. Here. Get to the nearest hospital telephone, will you? Must be a doctor about here somewhere, or at least a good vet. And then home, James. Home to Jennifer. I can't really oh. just leave you here, can I? Here, hang on to that, will you? Huh? Now, steady. Put your arm around my neck. Oh. Uh, wait a minute. You ready? Yeah. All right. Up you go. Oh. Oh. Now, mind, there are a couple of steps. Right. Oh. You know, I might have known this would happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to win the three legged race at primary school with a, a red head. Oh, Zoe. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Over there, out of the way. God. Put your other arm around my neck. Yeah. Oh, oh. Get down. oh James, I'm, I'm sorry about this. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. No, I've got some slow gin in here somewhere, I think. Oh, good old James. There you are. Thanks. No, I'm afraid we're going to have to have that boot. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. You all right? Yeah. I must see what the damage is, you see. Hmm. You ready? Mm. All right, sorry, 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 it's all right. Mm. Let's have a look at this, shall we? <sighs> Hang on. Yeah. <sighs> sorry, all right, that's all, that's all. <sighs> Leo, I think it's broken. Oh, God. James? James, what the hell are you doing? Perfect kindling. <laughs> a bit lucky some of the time, isn't it? You're a good boy scout, James. Well, in that case, it's very lucky for you that I've got a box of matches, <laughs> isn't it? There we are. Ow. Go on now, James. I don't need watching through the night. No. I'll survive. It's going to take me a bit of time to get back to the car, get help. 
and get back here. We're going to need a tractor or something to clear those trees out of the drive. Now, you're shocked. I've got the gin. You're cold. Well, I've got a fire. And you're hungry. Oh, no, James, no, no. I don't care how many badges you've got, not the hair. Yeah, there's something else I've got to do first. Look, I may not give you £10,000, Leo, but you can certainly have the shirt off my back. Hey, no, you can't rip that. Just oh, yeah. you shut up, will you, and get on with your, with your gin. Oh. There we are. Well, at least we've got running water, even if it is through the roof. I'm not absolutely certain this is going to do you any good, you know. If it's broken, I don't think it will. But if it isn't, it might just keep the swelling down. Now, you're right. Yeah. Sit there. There you are. Up, up, mm. up. Ah. I'm going to skin the hair before, you know. I've done a rabbit. I'm rather good at rabbits, actually. I suppose it's the same principle, only more generous, don't you think? James. <laughs> James, please. Not the hair. Tell you something. Huh? Charlie? Be delighted. Charlie? Be absolutely delirious. You have a son and heir to inherit his empire. Oh. What about James's empire? Poor little devil, I hope it's a girl. Will you feed it yourself? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'm sure all the Hadley women has always fed all their young themselves because, let me tell you, that is what has made them what they are today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, share. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I, was, I was thinking of Helen. She'd be a great aunt and she'd be living. <laughs> you, you know, I'll tell you something about that. To tell you the truth, I think that she's always fancied James herself. But... Yes. The laws of consent, con quality. That's it. Visit. Mm. Oh, bottle's empty. Ring for Sutton. Mm. Oh. Oh, yeah, perhaps I went. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder which Sutton would like, a girl or a boy. Oh. I think you're probably leaving it because I didn't see Sutton knocking out three fish fingers and a mashed banana, do you? Pity. Rather fancy Sutton. <laughs> fancy Sutton? Oh. Why? I don't know. I just feel that underneath that rather uptight exterior, there's a primitive man waiting to leap out. It's rather a pity we haven't got any red currant jelly, really, isn't it? <laughs> Here. Yes, I think just a sip, sort of hot. We've got some burgundy in the bag, as a matter of fact, it's rather good. <laughs> do Perhaps you, I ought to chambre it. Do you always it? travel in such luxury? Yes, always. <laughs> it's my man Sutton. He's very good at emergencies. <sighs> I think it's probably something in his past. If you know, in another five minutes, I think that's going to be ready. That is, if you like your hair rare, do you? James, what about Jennifer? Oh, she'll understand. Be happy, James. Don't fall into the trap. The trap? My father always used to tell me that the best thing that can happen to a man is to marry a good woman and found a family. Well, I married a good woman. And I founded my family. But too quickly. Now the family I've founded is gone. Lucy lives with a weirdo in a on a commune in Perthshire. Martin is studying electronics and shows every sign of becoming just as big a boy as his father. <laughs> we meet once a year, and we have nothing to say to each other. Give yourselves time, James. That's the gin talking. I think you'd better get on to the bed. Now, with any luck, this is going to be ready. Smoked. Oh, ready. Oh, so that last is just on uh, Do you think you could hold on to that uh, just yeah, for a second? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry about the plate, but it's uh, at least it's clean, isn't it? Thank you. Oh, oh, ah. Sorry. Whew. There you are. Hair in a basket. James, will you please it's go? All right, all in good time. All in good time. Now you've got the wine. You've got the wood. 
Yes, I think you better. All right. But I wonder, would you mind leaving the knife? Not at all. Thanks. Look after yourself. It's been a nice house. So where is he? Where the hell's James? I'm sorry to trouble you at this time, and I'm afraid I had an accident. My car's broken down. I think it's run out of petrol, and I've got a friend who's hurt himself. Oh. We need help, I'm afraid. Oh. Come on in. Oh, thank you. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, you're dread. Yes, I am, I'm afraid. Yes. Come oh. on, with that fire. Oh. I am awfully sorry to get you off at this time, and I... You, uh... You don't have a telephone that I could borrow, do you? No, no, sorry. Where, where have you broken down? Well, about a mile up the road, that small road to the left by the reservoir. Oh, there. Oh, <coughs> That'll soon liven up a bit. Yeah, take that coat off. Thank you. Yeah? yeah. Oh. Use this. Thank you. That's very kind. Oh, that's kind of oh. Uh. Oh, Where's your friend? Uh, he's at... No, he's up at Ratcliffe House. I don't know whether you know it. Oh, I Ooh. used to go oh. there as a girl. Oh, every year the, the old fete in garden people had come from miles round to a famous Ratcliffe fete. Oh, but it's been empty this 30 year. Trees down in drive. What took you there? Yeah, she might well ask. Well, we went to see if it was going to be... if we could redevelop it, really. I'm afraid my friend has broke his ankle. You... you don't have a car that I could borrow, do you? Oh, no. Bustos, uh, well, where's the nearest house that has got a telephone? Well, you know? that would be Mr. George's, uh, about half an hour from here. Oh, God, I've been walking for some time already. Oh, I'll get me some up. No, no, John! No, please, it's all right. It's all really. right. Oh, John! Okay. That's very kind. Get up! There's been an accident. Oh, you'll need the police. They, they've a tractor for the trees. Uh, and you've been needing a doctor. Yes, yes, I think we were. Where is the nearest doctor? Oh, Do you know? It's Cottage Hospital at Lincoln. Oh, well, we could take him there, couldn't uh, we? Then? John, you to get your bicycle and you to go to Mr. George's. It is kind of you. See, if you could go to the police, I could go back to Ratcliffe House to my friend. Would you tell them to bring an ambulance and a tractor, because the trees are down in the drive? They won't come till morning. Oh, they'll call. They won't, you know. Well, you tell them. Get on with you. No, I wonder if they'd let you make another phone call to my wife. She'd be worried, you see. Oh. You haven't got a piece of paper, have you, that I could borrow? Just to write the telephone number down. Oh, All right, no, that's fine. Thank you very much. Yes, it'll be two. One, if you could just tell her that I'm all right. We've had this accident and there's nothing really wrong and I'll be back in the morning. Uh, 
Lewis. Oh. You sleep? Yes. Well, either we go to bed or I'm going to phone the police. The Tony phone? No. What time is it? Midnight. What's happened to him? <coughs> this is Mrs. James Headley of Melford Park. Uh, yes, that's right. Um, look, I'm sure you must get hundreds of calls like this, but um, my husband should have been back at four o'clock this afternoon, and he still isn't here. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm sure he'll be back later. I really must get back to my friend. Oh. No, no, really, I won't have any more. Thank you very much. Oh. And thank you very much for the aspirin, too. I'm sure he's going to appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. We should have told him to come here for you first. Oh, your jacket's still wet. Yes, it is, but at least it's warm, oh. thanks to you. It, you've really been very kind. Thank you so much. Mm. Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry, madam. I didn't realise you were there. So, what time is it? It's five to eight, madam. No, 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 not all the way, please. Oh. Sutton, has anyone phoned? I'm afraid not, madam. Look, shall I phone the police? Half past three, I phoned nothing. Look, I know it's unusual for Mr. Hadley not to keep in touch with you, but I'm sure he's all right, madam. Thank you, Sutton. Can I have a cup of tea? Straight away, madam. Nothing. No phone? No, nothing. Oh, men. What's the point of leaving if nobody notices? We've been up all night. No tea. Morning sickness. I've asked for some tea and do I have to be sick? Oh, I think it varies. <sighs> Don't understand it. Why hasn't he phoned? If he's conscious, he would have phoned! So would Tony. Oh, the hell with Tony. I'm going to phone every police station between here and Carlisle. He was with a friend, Mr. Leo Ingram, somewhere in the Pennines, and he was driving a Triumph Stag, registration FDU 751L. Hold on, please, I'll check. Thank you. What, Mr. James Adley and Mr. Leo Ingram? Yes. Oh, we've had something through from Lincoln. Hold the line, please, Mrs. Adley, and I'll try to connect you. Lewis. Hello? Hello? Uh, this is Mrs. James Hadley. Uh, my husband was with a friend, Mr. Leo Ingram, and, and I haven't heard from him, and I should have heard from him, and he was driving a Triumph Stag registration FD... Uh, Hadley? Yes. Is that Mrs. Hadley? Yes. Oh, yes, that's right. Hello? Yes, yeah, hello, hello. They were Hadley and Ingram? Yes, yes, Ingram. Oh, yes, two gentlemen who spent the night at Ratcliffe House. We got a call. I'm afraid one of them's injured. How injured? Well, I'm sorry, I don't know. Our men are up there now. The trees are down, you see. They're having to shift them. Yes, can you tell me exactly where Radcliffe House is, please? There you are. Now, your next-door neighbour is coming in every hour on the hour, and Greta's on the next plane back. And I owe you a shirt. And don't think I'm going to let you forget it, because I'm not. Now, tell me something, Leo. Mm -hmm. About that golden handshake you got from Holland. What did you get? More like a leaden handshake. Ah, uh, I see. Well, about this house. Oh, forget no, it. No, no, I won't forget. You're a, you, you, I've known you a long time. You've been a good front man. You always were. You mean there's nothing behind? <laughs> I'll put a thousand in. Uh, 
Now, that's just for a surveyor's report, an architect's report, and the record of the last ten years' weather. James, that's and, and that's all. Until we hear what the experts say, including Greta. And if it works, senior partners... No, Leo, no! <laughs> a small interest, that's all, but I, I, I will help you set up the rest. Well, that's good enough for me, James. That's all right. Oh, my God. Look, do you mind if I just ring you? Hello, be my guest. I tried from the hospital, but I didn't get through. What are you going to tell her? Oh, I shall tell her the truth. Well, I may dress it up a bit, but... Uh... <laughs> Alfred Park. Sutton? Mr. Hadley. Hello, Sutton. Did you get my message? No, sir. We've had no message. Sir, I think I should tell you, Mrs. Hadley is very worried, sir. She's been up all night. Yes, I think she might be. Well, would you get her for me, please? I'm afraid she's not here, sir. No. No, she's gone with Miss Karen. They've taken Mrs. Hadley's car. Oh, my God. All right, now listen, Sutton. I'll be back in two hours. You're not to leave the house, and if she comes back, you're to keep her there, and please just tell her that everything is all right, will you? Right, sir. Oh, God. Trouble? Well, knowing Jenny, there just might be. Where the hell she got to? I'm afraid I don't know, sir. She didn't say anything? No, sir. The last time I saw her was when I brought in the morning tea, and then she seemed to spend a great deal of time on the telephone, sir. And you didn't hear her leave? No, sir. I'm sorry I didn't. Darling, I am sorry. Sutton tells me you've been up all night. Yes. Ah, oh, no. How are you? I, I, I did send a signal, but it somehow didn't get through enemy lines. No, it didn't. You're a very surly boy. I should have known, really, I, I suppose. Ah. Uh, well, where have you been? Oh, out and about. We went to look at this, uh, th this house that uh, Leo wanted to read of. It's a beautiful house. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there was a slight accident. Mm, was there? Now, if it was serious, I'd have made sure of getting through to you. Nice hair, was it? Uh, I you... thought you had to hang them for a week. Ah, you went there. And to the police, and to the hospital. Ah. Westdale 2314? Tony? Yes, it's me! What? Oh, oh hang on a minute. It's Tony. He was worried. Darling, I'll take it upstairs. <laughs> the question is really, of course, do I deserve it, isn't it? Immaterial. Are you all right? Well, I thought I was pregnant, but I'm not because it was a false alarm. When I thought I was, I was so unhappy because, you see, I thought I wasn't ready, but now I know I'm not. I'm so sad. <laughs> when I thought you were, I was very, very happy. <gasps> now I know you're not, I'm delighted. Mm. But I've got you to myself for a little longer, haven't I? There's plenty of time, darling. There's plenty of time. 